this morning. Some of you probably said to me, man, there's a lot of music, a lot of songs. That's all right, because uh, we had a discussion down in Sunday school about these old years, <laughs> rocking and rolling a little bit. And you know what? For me, I'm sorry, I, I could sing and sing or listen and listen all day long, uh, especially to the, 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 the words, not to mention the melodies, but the words that were expressed almost, and actually in every song. And for me, I have to say this because I have the inside little scoop on what, the, what, what the, the, the sermon is all about, which if you would turn to Mark chapter 1, and some of y'all can say, yay, because we're about to leave chapter 1 and go into chapter 2. And uh, oh, wait, I, I just want to just say, because, uh, and Sister Foley had reminded me that I had sent out an email to anyone that was in the church that had email, an email address. I sent out an email. On our website, we have the ability as a church to um, have prayer requests. And so um, if you answer that email, by answering, there's probably like a link, and you, you, uh, Log on to Faith Life or Log Us, L O G O S. You log on to that. You create your own account, and by it's, and everything's free because it's all associated with the church. And what takes place is um, with Faith Life, especially at least for this year, um, we have the ability of, of having at our fingertips Bible study, first of the day. Uh, Bible readings. If you're struggling with how to read through the Bible, there's Bible reading plans to help you every day where you can click on to the church website and, and, and read one of the things for your daily Bible study. If you've got a prayer request on your heart, you can type it in and people will be praying for your prayer request. If you're really into certain things like television, there is what they call Faith Life TV that has all kinds of, of uh, uh, gospel movies and, and television series that, that's all godly oriented. Or you can actually, if you really want to even go deeper, there's a, 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 a Bible, not Bible studies, but like classroom things. So you can actually do this, this one class on this subject or that subject. And it's all at your fingertips on your phone, on your tablets, on your computers. And it's all connected to Culver City Church of God. Yeah. And so if you like, you can, you can, you don't have to. You know what's making you. You know, if, you, if you're like, ah, I'm a little bit worried about it, don't do it. You don't have to. But if you would like to be more connected with things that are happening in the church or things that are happening like all those things I was saying, you have the free ability to do it, okay? And, and let, as we go with it, um, I'll do more side-by-side you know, -side teaching. Hey, this, this will help you this way. I'll help you through it, okay? Just that's one thing that I uh, email that shout out to you. It is not spam, <laughs> nor is it a virus. It is actually the church, just so you know. It's the church. And so the, some of these are... Um, goes along with what I'm talking about. In order to share, in order to testify or have a testimony or to give out, you got to take in so you know what to give out. Okay? That's just the way it is. You can't give out the scriptures if you don't know them. I've said that before. You can't talk about the love of Jesus if you don't have that love of Jesus with you. You can't talk about God the Father if you don't have it. You can't do none of this without it. Okay? Without God, without Jesus, without your studies. Uh, you know what? You can't just be saved. I'm going to tell you that right now. All I got to say, good for you. You got saved. We celebrate with that. That's a celebration. But when you go into Scripture, it is all about taking in. Taking in so you can give out. Always. Christ gave the greatest examples with it as we are in Mark chapter 1 and 2 coming up. All those songs that we sang, they were all testimony. All testimony. Victory in Jesus. How, you can't sing victory in Jesus if you ain't got no victory in Jesus. 
You can't sing, oh, happy day. And I got that 70s version, me and Laura are talking about There's all kinds of, oh, happy day, the way it's done. But I'll tell you what, no matter what version or how you do it, it's a happy, happy day when Jesus did what? Washed my sins away. And then all of the, you know, all those other songs. And, and when we, you wait till next week when we get peace, peace, wonderful peace. Coming down from who? The Father above. You can't have it if you ain't got it. See, so how did he say that? I'm telling you what. It's all in connection. All in connection. Uh, then we go really holiness. Oh, man, Pastor, talking about holiness again? Holy people? Well, you know what? This is filled with holy people. And you know what else is filled with? People that are just like me and you at one time and were holy and got holy. How's that happen, Pastor? Well, Mark chapter 1. A man with leprosy came and knelt in front of Jesus. I'm at verse 40. Came and knelt in front of Jesus, begging him to be healed. If you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. He said, let's see, he said, that's what the man said. Can I say this real quick? This is after those other stories where Jesus had already healed people, a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people. And so now you have a guy come up, hey, if you're willing, if you can, if you can heal me. Move with compassion, verse 41. Jesus reached out and touched him. Bill Gaither. 1963, wrote that song. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the what? Joy that fills my soul. Jesus reaches out and touches him. I am willing, he said. Be healed. Instantly, 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 the leprosy disappeared and the man was healed. Then Jesus sent him on his way with stern warning. Don't tell anyone about this. Instead, go to the priest and let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. I'm going to keep on going, but we're going to come back to some of this. These, there's two stories we're going to talk about on this healing, and we just have got to grasp what has taken place. Don't tell anyone, but you need to do what's required of you so that you know, it's a, a public testimony. Verse 45. But the man went and spread the word, proclaiming to everyone what had happened. As a result, large crowds soon surrounded Jesus, and he couldn't publicly enter a town anywhere. He had to stay out of the, in the secluded places, but people everywhere kept coming to him. Another story, Mark chapter 2. When Jesus returned to Capernaum several, several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room even outside the door. While he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. So they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his back right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, My child, your sins are forgiven. But some of the teachers of the religious law who were sitting there thought to themselves, what is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking. So he asked them, why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or stand up, pick up your mat, and walk? So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, pick up your mat, 
and go home. And the man jumped up. And the man jumped up <laughs> and grabbed his bat, walked through the stunned onlookers. And they were all amazed and praised God, exclaiming, we have never seen anything like this before. The, in these few moments, quickly, holy, or like this, kind of like Mark, immediately I'm going to tell you, <laughs> suddenly I'm going to tell you, right away I'm going to tell you about holiness and testifying. Holiness and a testimony. Holiness and speaking out what your holiness is within your life to others. In the first story, the man has leprosy. Everybody knows what leprosy is, a skin disease. Everybody, it's something you can see, and when you see it, ew, I'm not going to touch you. And I'm going to tell you this, as I speak these, mo these few moments of these words, understand this, that thought process has not changed today. We view leprosy maybe not so much as a skin condition, but we view it how we look at others. You see that person over there? Yeah, man. Um, can I go old, very old school? I kind of don't even know what years it was. If it was 80s, it was probably 90s Valley Girl stuff. Gag me with the spoon. Ah, ah. You see that? Ah, you see that person? Ah. Like you, just, you disgust me. I don't want to touch you. I don't want to be by you. Please don't talk to me. We look at people and we judge them in such a way as if they have leprosy. Quotes for leprosy. Because we make up the reasons why we will never, ever associate with your kind. Well, we were once like those people. Because you know what? When you were in your sin, or if you are in your sin, I'm not, here's, a, here's a news flash. People look at you the exact same way as having leprosy. See what they just did? It's worse. You see what that so-called Christian did? Do you see how they are? Do you see how? And I don't mean it in a holiness way. I mean it in, do you see the sin that they are still doing. The stuff that I'm doing, that they're saying they're better than me by being a Christian, they're doing the exact same thing. And so they look at you, as you look at them with leprosy, they look at you, the Christian, the exact same way. You are still in your sin. And I'm going to tell you this. Here's the beauty of holiness. In verse 41, in chapter 1, it is what? Man has leprosy. He asks to be healed, and what does Jesus do? He touches him. He does what mankind would not do. You know what? You're so messed up, I refuse to touch you. Yet Jesus comes and says, you know what? There is no one I will not touch. And so in your sin, I will touch you. In your sin, I will touch you. In your sin, I will touch you. In your, wherever you're at, I will touch you. That's Jesus. That is the difference between him and us today. I'm going to tell you this. The beauty of that is that, see, people are like this. I'm so bad. I'm so ugly. If I ugly, I'm so dirty. I'm so unclean. I'm so unwanted. I'm so all of this. That if the Savior, the Savior was to touch me, he would be like dirt of me. As I come up to other people and I intermingle my dirt with them, they will be dirty just like me. When Jesus touches you, when you are in sin and you need to be clean, the Holy One of holiness, Jesus touches you. And here's the beauty, are you ready? He does not become dirty because He touched you. You become holy because holiness has touched you. See, we're a people that we, we don't grasp holiness. We don't grasp that, yes, I'm saved. Jesus saved me. When you say that, you're saying, the master touched me. The master cleaned me. And with that touch, I become holy. And if you're going to say you're a follower of Jesus Christ, that's the heart you have to have. The Holy One touched me, and so therefore, this step is holy. This step is holy. This hand is holy. These words are holy. That is holiness when you're touched by the Savior. You become holy. Just like the man who was immediately healed. You know what? He technically, he did not really have to go to the priest and go, I need your blessing on this. See how clean I am now. He really didn't need that. Jesus comes in with honoring what was laid out.
So, I say it this way, because in the beginning of his ministry, and even in his ministry today, people refuse the holy touch. They refuse that you, you who have been in such sin, you're holy now, you're touched by the master, you say it, now it's got to be proved by this priest or whatever. And today, we have to be careful because our hearts, we act like we're the priests. You're not holy unless I say you're holy. You, you're not holy unless you're, you're not changed unless I say you're changed. Who are we? Because the Holy One touched him or her and made yeah. that person clean. That's good. Yeah. Now, can I say this? Hallelujah. That, well, let's get into that good second story because here's where it, it, it comes into a, a thought process. See, he touches the leper and cleanses him. And then he's about to do the next one, which is the, the paralyzed man that comes through the roof with the four guys and their faith and, and nothing. See, nothing's... This is a beauty here. Those four guys, their testimony was the healer is here. And we have to do whatever it takes so that our friend is touched by the one of holiness. Hallelujah. We should be like those four friends. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We should have a desire within us that whoever God has placed within our path, that we do whatever it takes so they meet the Holy One and are touched and are cleansed and are made clean. You know why? Because with everything he's done, just let's go chapters. In the first chapter, is he proves he had the authenticity of who he is in healing, especially. I'll start with just healing. In touching and cleansing people. Where the world would ostracize them, he makes them whole. Where the world would turn them away, he gives them a place. A haven of rest, would be the same. Yeah. And so we have right here in his own, in, in the words and the teachings of Jesus. Because when, when, you know, like I said, there's some religious people, you got to be careful about them because some of them are messed up. And we got to be careful for themselves too. We do not want to be messed up either. I want to be touched. I want to be cleansed. I want to be holy. But there were some in chapter 2 that in their minds, right? This guy is, is blasphemy. This, no one can... No one can forgive a sin except God. Can you imagine? It's in their hearts, it's in their minds, how this, it's in their mark. But they had to have from this. You know what? Now I did this last week. Wait, let's uh, the, the forgiveness of sins. Wait, that Old Testament. Old Testament. Forgiveness of sins? God. That's all. God's the only one that can forgive a sin. He can't forgive a sin. I don't care what he does or what he says. He cannot forgive a sin. Jesus then, knowing their heart, immediately confronts. You know what, guys? What, what are you, why are you thinking like this? Why are you thinking this way? And then he goes, he poses a question. Is it easier to say, pick up your mat, get up and walk? Is that easier to say? And in their minds, with that rhetorical question, it's like this. Yeah, it might be easier to say that because no one has ever done it. See, that's the thing. People need proof. And you have never proven you're the Holy One. You've never proven you can do this. You have never proven that a man can be healed and get up and walk who has never walked. You, it's never been done. You can't prove it. It's, and so because it's not proved, that makes you a liar, a blasphemer, the one who is under, not understanding only God can forgive sin. And with that thought, Jesus then says, or do I say, your sins are forgiven. And the beauty of it is Jesus comes back with, get up. Pick up your mat and go home. The response of the Holy One healing was he 
jumped up, <laughs> picked up his mat, and I would have loved to see how he walked through a stunned crowd. Because what was not proven now is in his hand, rolled up, jumped up. Here's the proof. It's in the pudding. <laughs> That's how I would be walking out of the stunned crowd. And so now, it's proven. Now, an action has been done. And now, no one has seen anything like it before. And I'm going to tell you this. When holiness hits a life, all you can do is testify. Victory in Jesus. You know, we're going to get into other stories. We're about to close. Pastor Mark, come on up. I want you guys to understand. The biggest thing you walk out of here to this morning is if I say I'm saved, if I say Jesus and His and, and God and the Holy Spirit are at work in my life, if I say that, if I say that the Holy One has touched me, my life is holy. It better act holy. It better speak holy. It better see holy. See, that's the thing. You gotta be careful, little eyes, what you see. Careful little, little ears, what you hear. See, if you were in Bible in Bible school, by Bible school I mean if you came to Sunday school as a kid, these are the songs you would be taught. And when you're taught those songs, they become a part of your heart. And when they become a part of your heart, they then have to become a part of your life. And so when we pick up our hymnal and as adults and we look at what we have, then we, when we're about to sing blessed assurance, guess what that is? I have this assurance. It is blessed, and let me tell you about that blessed assurance. These are the songs that I will sing in my testifying, in my testimony. And I'm going to tell you this, a holy life does not walk out of these doors and become unholy by choice of the Holy One. Hear what I said? We might walk out of these doors and go, man... Look at that person across the street over there. So, ah. Or we might can, <laughs> we might go to the parking lot. That was the worst sermon ever. I don't know why I come to this church. We might, we might, you know what? Another thing like they're they're taking up an offering. Man, they only want my money. And all of a sudden, I want you to understand because we're gonna get into a lot of this. It is all of Holiness is who you are. You know why we give? We give because we are a holy people so that holiness can be touched by someone else. That's why you give. Now, something nice sit here with me. You know, I give because they bring that plate around. You know what? That's your testimony. I want to change it. I don't want to change it. I want the Holy One to change it. I just want to be a part of, of that holy, holy, holiness movement. Holiness movement. A holiness people becomes a holiness church. A holiness church becomes a holiness block. A holiness block becomes a holiness neighborhood. And then, because we don't have to keep on going. But it all starts with you, a holy people. Know that blessed assurance. No. Oh, look, look, let's, let us stand. I want you to know this. These stories today of holiness, these stories today of someone who, who he told me in a stern warning to not say anything, and yet he went out telling everybody. <laughs> On the way to the priest, which is way over there, I might as well tell somebody. And so he started telling everybody. Walk out of here knowing this. That has not changed. These stories that we're reading, that we're listening to, that we're hearing about, that has not changed. That story of the Holy One touching you and cleansing you has not changed. That story where you can be the one proclaiming it wherever you go has not changed. Where are you today? Be touched, be holy, be clean, be forgiven. And tell somebody about it. Let us pray together. God, it's easy to hear words about holiness. It's easy to hear.
hear about you who can touch because we've been touched before. So yeah, we know what happens, God. We know you can do it. And so sometimes we can become complacent. God, may we not be like those teachers of religious uh, laws and stuff. God, may we still be a holy people that seek out you as a holy God and completely with your holiness in our lives. And may it certainly be reflected in our lives, God. If there's someone here today that does, that has not felt, not had stirred within their spirit that holy walk, God, holiness is forgiveness. May we be a forgiven people that we walk into understanding holiness in our lives. May we be one that tells others as we testify in Jesus' holy name.